I had the opportunity to play with Iggy Pop a few times over the years. And he's a guy I've always measured myself up against. Because to me, he is some ultimate rock and roll shit. And so I always said to myself, if I ever played with him, I'm going to blow his ass off stage. Because I love the guy, but I'm going to kick his ass. Because, you know, you got to go out there and, like, top the big guy, right? And so in, like, 1992, we're in uh, New Orleans, and we're playing, we're opening for the Beastie Boys. And Iggy Pop comes down to soundcheck, and he goes, hey, man, I'm here in town doing a record. I go, you want to jam with us tonight? And he's like... Fuck yeah, man. So later that night, everyone's in there waiting to see the Beastie Boys. And this weird kind of, you know, interruption before the gig. That would be us goes on. <laughs> and uh, we are given an hour to do our thing. So 55 minutes. And I go, okay, we have a special guest tonight. And uh, it's a guy. And, you know, I've seen, there's two guys with this guy. There's Jim. Jim Osterberg. Hey, my name is Jim. Good to meet you, man. How are you? And then there's Iggy Pop. <laughs> and... Jim is cool. Iggy is like this terrifying monster of rock and roll. And so all afternoon, hey, man, uh, I should get back to the studio, okay? So I'll see you guys later on, okay? And he has that kind of, you know, Chuck Yeager, right stuff kind of gleam in his eyes. Well, okay, I'll be back later on and we'll rock, okay? Yeah. He's a good Ypsilanti, Michigan boy. And so he leaves and I'm 55 minutes and I go, okay, we have a special guest. And like, you know, 5,000 people like, we don't even give a fuck, you know? You know. I go, and uh, about to come out on stage is, and I look over on the side of the stage, and Jim Osterberg is nowhere in sight. There is this guy named Iggy Pop, shirtless, built like Bruce Lee. He's like 46 years old. He's like, <laughs> looking through me with the most feral eyes. I'm like, ah! And I go, okay, it's Iggy Pop. And he goes running across the stage, slams into the Beastie Boys keyboard, like takes Money Mark's keyboard out. Wham! And the roadie's like, what the fuck? That was so cool. <laughs> and he's like, wow, bing, 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 like all over the place. The guys in the band go backwards and they're up against their amps. It's like, I'm now up on the drum riser. I don't want to get hurt. And I'm trying to keep up with this guy. I'm like, he is beautiful. He is like 40 something. He's now bleeding. He's somehow, he has opened himself up. A minute in, he's bleeding beautifully. Little iron body, blood. You're like, whoa. And so everyone in the crowd's going like, whoa, now this is cool. They all come awake. People are going, he's blowing you off stage, man. I'm like, shut up, shut up. And I try and keep up with the guy. He thoroughly kicks my ass. And I see him after the show. Hey, man, uh, really appreciate you letting me come on stage with you guys. It was a real honor, okay? It was a real fucking honor, man. It's good to see you again, okay? Well, you tell the fellas I said hello, and I, I got to go, okay? Well, and he takes off. I'm like, fucking that guy. Okay, if there's ever another time. <laughs> if I ever play with his ass again, that's it. He's done for. Round two, 1994, Denmark. We do this gig in some like hockey rink and we're opening for Iggy. I'm like, okay, this is it. I'm gonna kick your fucking ass. I go out there and play to like the nth degree. I come off stage like dead. I'm like, top that. <laughs> Half an hour later, I'm sitting on the side of the stage like that, and uh, the band is on stage, and they start vamping on a song called Down on the Street from the Funhouse record, one of the sexiest, most violent, genius records ever. He's only like, you know, like 22 when he made it. Fuck. And so the band's like, dun, 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 and there's all these Scandinavian women just like, take, take me now! You know, they're just, <laughs> you can't resist that song. And so the band, like, for a minute, dun, 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 and it makes you want to fight and fuck all at the same time. And I'm on the side of the stage and the lights go down. Everyone's like, yeah. And I see he's got this big roadie guy who always goes with him. And I see the guy hold a microphone. He's like this. <laughs> Iggy Pop comes running down this ramp, grabs the mic like it's a relay baton, and goes out there, ah! and starts singing. And for the next hour and like 30 minutes, he just animalizes. And he's now like 48. You're like, how does he do this? No one remembers us playing. <laughs> what are you doing in Denmark? I, I, I played tonight. You did? Yes, I was the opening band. I saw you staring at me. 
You played? I just remember Iggy Pop. You're like, <laughs> he's just like, pink. Just, and, and then the same thing. Hey man, really an honor to have played with you, man. Man, I'm gonna remember this for a long time. You guys were great. Well, uh, so long. He takes off, you're like, fuck! I said, okay, round three is gonna be a bitch. Cause I'm coming. 1996, we're in band practice in New York, working away. The phone rings in the lobby of the uh, practice place. And I go running out there. And he goes, Henry, phone for you. It's my manager. He goes, all right, there's a festival in Finland. I'm like, whoa, I'll do it. I've never been there. I want to go, man. Don't you want to go to Finland? So I said, oh, I'll go. He goes, well, let, let, me, let me tell you about the festival. I'm like, all right, go ahead. He goes, all right, uh, the cure is headlining. I'm like, oh, shit. Because I have a weird thing with that cure guy. I just wonder what the fuck's the problem. You know, get your hair together. What, what's the whole like? Not a bad songwriter. Just what's up with the pose? Why did you choose that pose? The overweight, bad hair, you know, weird thing. What's up with that? I'm just curious. I'm just curious. So I said, oh, that's interesting. The cure. That'll be a really happy bunch of people out there. Oh, kill me, kill me. So I said, okay, so who's going on before uh, The Cure? And he goes, uh, Iggy Pop. I was like, oh, really? <laughs> oh, yeah? And uh, who would be going on before Iggy Pop, he asked expectingly. Uh, you guys. <laughs> War on the fjords. <laughs> You're going down, Iguana Man! So I said, we'll take the gig. <laughs> Go back into the practice room, and I'm totally in war mode. Prepare the set. In six weeks, we go to Finland to annihilate. And the guys in the band are like, they're real musicians. They think I'm a jack-off. And they, they, said, they said, Henry, um, we're trying to write our album, you know? And if we have to get the set together, it means we have to, like, stop what we're doing, even though we have to make a record in, like, you know, two months. So how about we not do the festival and work on this record that we really got to do a lot of work on? I'm like, <sighs> Because they have no idea that I have this whole thing that I've got to annihilate Iggy Pop. You fucking pussies. I go to the gym, you do not come with me. We will do this show, you will get the set together, we will destroy Finland! They're like, oh, 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 I'm so scared. Yes, of course we'll get the set together. Ooh, you might come over and search and destroy us. They're so tired of my ass. And so they said, okay, we'll do the set. And so we get the set together. I go into the most brutal training regime of my life. I'm going into the gym. I'm eating every day on a schedule. I now have a food itinerary. At 2.15 p.m., I will take in 43 grams of lean carbohydrates, 74 grams of lean protein, 2% sugar, 1% fat. I will drink 1.5 liters of unsaturated, unchlorinated water. And then I will destroy the gymnasium at 6.45 p.m. till 7.15 p.m. I will go home and meditate and confront a candle, energizing myself, then go back to the gymnasium for the next workout. Then I'll flagellate myself and go to bed. I will wake up in the morning, put on a John Coltrane record and meditate, go back to the gymnasium for the third workout in the next eight hours. Then I'll go to band practice and destroy. At 4.45 p.m., I will have an intake of four and a half pounds of tofu. Then I will go back to the gymnasium. I will throw people out of my way as I go to the squat rack. I will pray to the squat rack, and then I will squat 455 pounds for the next 20 repetitions. I will vomit, be killed, and then be taken back to my apartment where I will resurrect in the morning and go to band practice promptly at 11 a.m. Read between the lines. I'm really into this, okay? <laughs> And the weeks go by, I'm on the extra cycle. Hi, little kid. Come run with me. Watch out for the crackheads. The weeks go by. The set is now a well-honed instrument. I am you know, a rock-hard honed instrument. My, my heart rate is like that of a frozen lizard. Like, boom. I could run from here to Indiana and not feel it because I'm going to play my ass off. And so the day comes. We land 
Heathrow, we hang out, we go to Helsinki, then we have a four and a half hour drive up to, you know, this place up in the north where this festival is. And so we go to the gig site, and there's these kind of like trailer Quonset hut things for the backstage dressing rooms, and ours is right next to Iggy Pop. So I'm like, okay, I'll be seeing him soon. And so we're there hanging out like two hours before the gig, everyone in the band's hanging out, walking around. I am now preparing for the show, and I'm like, you know, baiting my head against the wall. <laughs> I am the wall. I am rock and roll. You know, I'm an asshole. Anyway. And so Iggy and his crew show up and they come in. Hey, guys, how you doing? Really nice people. And, he, you know, Jim walks up to everybody. Hey, Sim, good to see you. Melvin, Chris, Kenny. Hey, hey Henry, how are you, man? I'm like, good to see you, Jim. Keep your distance, okay? Can't be too cool to the guy you're about to annihilate. Good to see you, Jim. Yeah. Have a good show today. <laughs> right. You have no idea what you've let yourself in for. And so, <laughs> about an hour before the show, I'm like, oh, oh, oh. okay, finally, we go out there and we have a 60 minute set. And so I have, I'm, I've broken it into three 20 minute segments. 20 minutes, you know, the first 20 minutes, I will be in third gear. Second 20 minutes, I will go into fifth gear. The last 20 minutes, I will go into, like, nitro overdrive due to my intensely punishing training from the six weeks before. And so halfway through, I'm, like, I aim for fifth gear. I got to, like, fourth gear. I am dying in front of, like, 15,000 people. <laughs> Yet I am playing pretty fucking hard. And like, okay, now we're hitting this song. Eight songs into the 12 song set. <laughs> and now I am playing, I am playing so hard, I'm standing next to myself. Everything in me hurts because I am 30 something, no longer 20 something. Knees hurt, ass hurts, head hurts. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I keep playing. And I'm giving it the large one, as they say, sweat flying. I'm just, <laughs> And I look over on the side of the stage, Iggy's watching. He's like, whoa. And I'm like, ah! And everyone on the field is like, so what? Yeah, they could give a fuck. And so I get to like the last 10 seconds of the show and I'm like just, you know, playing like within an inch of my life. I am so dead tired, can't get enough air in me and about to vomit. I can't even like say good afternoon. I feel like, because I'm trying to make it come off like I'm not tired at all. And like when you're, <laughs> it's very hard to go, hey, how are you? You know, it's impossible. And so I'm like, <gasps> thanks for coming. Iggy Pop on next. <laughs> and my body's going, please let us have some new air. Please breathe. And I know if I breathe, I'm just going to keep breathing. Like I'll be like, <gasps> so I, I walk by Iggy like, <laughs> he looks at me and goes, no, I, I went like, walked around the corner like, <gasps> I get back to the little Quonset hut. I'm sitting on this bench. Iggy walks by me, looks at me, goes, fucker. Goes into his, I'm like, got your ass, yes! And so about half an hour later, the band, you know, the, the band is getting ready to go on. Iggy's nowhere in sight. I go to the stage to see what's going on, and the stage is being, you know, set up for Iggy, backline, rock and roll backline. It's also being set up for The Cure, who's gonna go on right after, and it's gonna get kind of dark, about as dark as it gets up there in that part of the world that time of the year. And, you know, they have a very elaborate light show, and so you have two road crews on stage. Iggy's setup is really minimal. Guitars, bass, drums, mic, next. You know, it's real simple. The Cure got, like, keyboards, serious light show. They got a lot of stuff, uh, extra monitors, are kind of on the side of the stage about to get moved in when Iggy goes off. And the stage has all these flower pots and planters that will be put on stage when the cure goes on. I, they have a thing with tulips. There's beautiful flowers everywhere. <laughs> and hey, flowers, I got no problem with flowers, you know. And so they're all going to be put on. So when the band goes on, you can see the flowers and all. So anyway, I'm on the side of the stage. Band goes on stage without Iggy, they start vamping on raw power. One of the greatest riffs ever. Iggy comes running on stage. The Fjord goes apeshit. I thought they were all dead when we were out there. Like, uh, and now they're like, yay! 
the place. Oh, oh, oh. Just, you know, bouncing like, what the fuck? Iggy, bing, bing, bing. Iggy is 50 years old, <laughs> bleeding. He sees his guitar player's double stacks, like four marshals with Marshall amps. It's about this high. Iggy jumps up like, whoa, like a fucking gazelle. Woof, lands on top of the amps, starts humping the amps. Like, ah, 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 and the amps are like, whoa, whoa, whoa. There's like these big Viking, huge, blonde-haired, you know, Teutonic, you know, kill your country, rape and pillage size guys back there holding this shit for dear life. Like, fucking hell, man. Because like, he's like, ah, ah. And if Iggy falls, it would hurt so much. I mean, to land on your hip from that height, oh my God, just thinking about it. And like, oh, don't fall, don't fall. Oh, if he knocks the amps over and one lands on his head, he's dead. He doesn't give a fuck. He's like, uh, 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 falls off. And everyone goes, oh! Like, poof, everyone goes, oh, God! It's like falling on your keys. Just thinking about it. You're like, oh, oh, oh. He's back up on his feet again. Bing, bing, bing. Everyone's like, how the fuck does he do that? Song after song goes by. Bing, bing, bing. Where about that? Everyone's like, fucking hell. He's the man. Bleeding. Oh, just bleeding. And like, whoop, 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 everything. No fat on his body whatsoever. Like, enter the dragon, you know? And he goes into Lust for Life, which is a great song, but it's made more popular at the time from the Train Spotting soundtrack. And so the fjord is going nuts. Dun, 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 dun. Everyone's going apeshit. Iggy throws the mic down and starts kind of running around the stage like he's a fucking maniac. People are going nuts. There's these footlights at the front of the stage for the cure. They're he's like, bam! <laughs> Lost. Bam! I'm like, oh shit. You see the cure's row crew, look at Iggy's row crew, going, hey, hey. And, he, and they're like, <laughs> grabs the mic. Hey, man, come on and sing with us. The entire fjord lunges forward. Kids go over the barrier like lemmings. Huge, blonde-haired Viking men valiantly push them back. Go, go, no, 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 don't come over. No, don't come over. Please stop, please stop. They're being real, they're not hurting the kids. They're being really cool. Iggy goes, hey, man, it's my fucking show, man. Get out of the way. And they're like, whatever, fine. Kids are like, yay! <laughs> so the stage is overrun by kids. And I was like, Iggy gives the mic to some guy. I've been lost for life. I've been lost for life. Guy's like running all over the stage. Which is basically what the song is all about. Iggy, now unencumbered with vocal duties, can go do whatever the hell he wants. First order, ah, a flower pot. Bam! Another flower pot. Bam! Ooh, a planter full of flowers. Bam! Now, what do you think all the kids do? Oh, you shouldn't destroy all that stuff. It's for the cure set. They go like, license to ill! Wahoo! <laughs> People are passing the mic around singing. The band is like behind their gear now. They're just like out of the way. Just, just dun, 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 dun. We're like in the seventh minute. The stage is covered with, st with stampeded flowers, peat moss, and clay pottery in shards. Iggy is covered with peat moss, sweat, and blood. His eyes are wild. He is bleeding out of the corner of his mouth like a John Wayne movie. Like, ah, ah, ah. They eventually clear the stage of kids. He gets the mic back. They go into the next like eight songs. It is amazing. He gets to the last song. Band leaves, he's alone on stage with just him and the audience. It's kind of dark outside, it kind of looks like the evening. Not dark, dark, but dark enough. Lights are on him, sweating, bloody, just built like a brick shit house. Just incredible. 50, takes the mic, he's just like, ah! And we're like, what the fuck is he doing? Grabs the guitar player's guitar, which is still on, feeding back, like, It was one of the most brilliant things I have ever seen in my life. 15,000 people are like, whoa, whoa. You know, and then he takes the guitar, takes the mic, bam! 
damn thing just breaks, the PA blows out, and he goes, play just <laughs> huge roar. Walks by, walks by me, sweating, bleeding, like out of the corner of his mouth, walks by me, goes, <laughs> fuck. Then you realize you're never going to beat the master. <laughs> <laughs>